I'm Paul Hannan. I'm a professor of entrepreneurship at Swansea University in Wales. Uh, I'm director of a program that supports the development of small businesses across the country of Wales. And I'm also director of the Institute for Entrepreneurial Leadership. And today I want to spend a few minutes talking to you about vision and mission. But I also want to add in a couple of other items that I think are related to understanding what vision and mission are all about. So, immediately that we talk about vision, we are in the future. We are talking about the future. And the one thing that we know about the future is that it's very uncertain, it's very unpredictable, and it's highly complex. But that's good because it's those types of environments in which entrepreneurial opportunities emerge. So if we're going to be an entrepreneur, if we want to develop entrepreneurial ideas, then these types of environments are really helpful. But we also know that if we're preparing to create a new venture, create a new business, then trying to think about how this business might evolve and emerge into that future is uh, perhaps a bit more difficult. So we do need to think about what the future might be like. And there are some tools that can be used to do this. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the tools in depth in this session, but I just want to highlight the outcomes of what might be helpful for you thinking about your future in your business. So although we can't predict the future, um, we don't know what's going to happen. We can think of plausible futures. We can think of a range of different future states that might be helpful for us thinking about the world in which we might want to operate our business or our venture. So if you use scenario planning tools and uh, you identify a couple of factors that you think are going to influence the future significantly, you can create extreme scenarios. These are examples of potential future states of the world. So for example, on this uh, slide here, we're looking at temperature as a key factor that's going to influence the future, and humidity. So if you put those two factors against each other, you can come up with four scenarios. One is high levels of humidity and high levels of heat, or high levels of humidity but a cooler temperature. And then, of course, you can have dry environments with very low levels of humidity, uh, where the temperature may be hot or the temperature may be cold. So you end up with four future potential scenarios, and all four of these are plausible. So when you're thinking about a business that is something to do with climate change or the future of the planet, then you can think about how would my business operate in these four different futures. So it is a useful tool to help you think uh, about the future in which you might be uh, developing your business. So let's focus a little bit more now on what is vision and mission. Uh, and a great starting place for this is, of course, Wikipedia. And if you go to Wikipedia and you look up vision and mission, these are the sorts of things that you'll see. And you'll see that vision is very much about a future ideal. It's highly aspirational. It's about hopes. It's about ambitions. It's about the sort of world that you want to be in or that you want your organization to operate in. So the example here is a world without poverty. This is an example of an ideal future state, a world without poverty. Whereas a mission is very much about the purpose of the business. So in the purpose of the business, it's describing what we might do, why we exist. It might help us to understand what our objectives and goals should be. And it provides a framework within, we can within which we can make decisions about what we should or should not do. So the sorts of questions it might help to address is, actually, who is our target customer? Actually, what is that we're providing to them and why should they come to us? So if we had a vision about a world without poverty, 
A simple mission statement would be providing jobs for the homeless and unemployed. So what we do in our business is to provide jobs, and if we do that, it will help us to achieve our vision of a world without poverty. So vision is aspirational, it's about an ideal future state. Mission is about purpose and what we do. So if we want to talk about vision and mission, there are two other concepts that we also need to consider. Values and strategy. Values are the beliefs that we have in our organization, uh, the drive what we believe is important. They drive the culture of the organization and they help us set priorities for the sorts of things that we want to do and help, help us to make the right types of decisions. So again, values are aspirational, but they tend to be based around a set of principles. So one example here of a, a value for an organization is knowledge and skills are the keys to success. So this is a value for the organization. So it means when it's making decisions about what it should do, who it should do it with, it will continually focus on its key value about knowledge and skills being the keys to success. And if we then want to translate vision and mission and values uh, and find a way to implement those through our business venture, then we need to think about strategy. And this is where we decide the objectives and the goals that enable us to deliver uh, our vision and our mission. Sometimes it's called a roadmap. It's about how we get from where we are, point A, to where we want to be, point B. And it also helps us to identify action plans. So what are the specific, tangible things that we should do tomorrow and the day after? So vision and mission values and strategy are all very interlinked. And here is an example from an organization that has a, an, eco, um, an eco purpose. So its vision is that we'll have a world where buildings breathe and produce more renewable energy than they consume. That's the vision. So the mission, its purpose, is to make the planet greener. And it's going to do that, its strategy is going to do that through facilitating the transfer of know-how across different organizations. And in the diagram, the organization also describes the sort of tools that it might use to do this. So this is just one simple example. But I want to uh, move us on in thinking about vision and mission in terms of you. Uh, what we've been looking at so far is a sort of managerialist view of vision and mission in relation to an organization. Um, what I want to do is think about vision and mission in relation to you as an individual and about your personal values and how this will affect what you do. This was beautifully summed up uh, by the guys who set up Facebook when they talked about the startup of you. And they recognize that not everyone is going to be an entrepreneur, but that everyone should be entrepreneurial in everything that they do as individuals, in the communities where they uh, live and work, and in the organizations uh, that they are engaged with. So the startup of you is very much about developing an entrepreneurial way of thinking and an entrepreneurial future. So in this sense, a vision and a mission has a slightly different context, but it builds on the principles that we looked at before. So what would your personal vision be? What would be your concept of an ideal future? And how could you describe that in a vivid way and show that it stimulates you, stimulates your energy, uh, that something that you would commit to and something that you would have confidence about taking forwards into that future uh, world. What about your mission? What is it about what you want to do that gives it meaning and purpose in your life? How, through doing that, does it help you to develop your own self-esteem and your own self-belief? And what are your personal values? 
What is it that you want people to say about you or think about you in terms of what you stand for? What would you fight for? What would you give up other things to defend? And how are you going to determine your strategy that will help you link your mission with the profit or whatever outcomes you're seeking from your new venture? And how will it help you to show how you can move from where you are now to, a, to the future, moving from point A to point B? So do you know your own values? What is it that you stand for? Is it freedom? Is it fairness? Trust and integrity? Is it about family and relationships? Is it about a sense of whole being, wholeness? It's really important to try and understand what is it inside of you that you're very uh, passionate about. It's also very important to understand why you want to do this. Is it because you want to gain control in your life? You want to be independent. You don't want to work for someone else. Do you have some great ideas and you want to develop these and take these forwards? Do you want to be wealthy? Do you want to make a real difference in the world, in your community, in your life? Or you just want to be creative, have some fun? So how are you going to make a life from the things that you're passionate about and from your, your values? I think fundamentally the point is that you are your business. When you're starting up, particularly if you're starting up on your own, uh, there's no differentiation between you and your business. Entrepreneurship isn't something you do from nine o'clock till five o'clock, Monday to Friday, and then you're something else or someone else uh, in the evenings and the weekends. Entrepreneurship is a way of life. It's a way of being, it's a way of thinking, it's a way of doing. So whatever you do is reflected in your business. And I wanted to just highlight a couple of points from a colleague of mine, uh, Professor Rick Dobbins, who talks about a whole range of mental laws uh, based around successful entrepreneurs. And there are two I just wanted to highlight, the law of belief and the law of habit. So his argument is that we are where we deserve to be. Because in previous times, yesterday, last week, last year, a decade ago, we have made choices and decisions and taken actions. And it's all those choices and decisions and actions that have enabled us to be where we are today. So if you stay as you are, as a person, as an individual, the way you think, the way you do things, then you stay where you are. And if you carry on doing what you've always done, then you will always get what you've always got. So the, the message here is that if we want to move on, if we want to be really successful, we have to think about the habits in our lives and whether they are helping us move forwards. We have to think about the things that we believe in and particularly in our own self-belief. And if any of those need to change, then we need to take the actions and be responsible for making those changes in our lives. In trying to sum up uh, what we've been talking about in this session, and particularly to focus around you and creating your own vision and mission, then there are a couple of points just to um, highlight. So know who you are. This is fundamental in terms of trying to be a successful entrepreneur. You need to know who you are, what you want, what you're passionate about, what you stand for, what are your values, what are you prepared to defend and fight for. You need to think about how you can develop a strong sense of self-belief and build emotional strength. Being an entrepreneur and going on an entrepreneurial journey is an emotional roller coaster. Sometimes you are very high from the successes you've had. Sometimes you're very low from things not having worked out as you thought they might. And you need to have the strength to see that through. You need to have the strength to avoid people saying to you, ah, this won't work, you can't do this, we tried that. Um, so developing that, that emotional strength is important. Visualize your own ideal future world and what is the purpose 
you want to achieve in that world and how would you get there? By taking actions and small steps. There's some great work by a professor called Saras Sarasvathi who argues that the development of big, long-term, five-year business plans and strategies uh, doesn't work. That for most of us, we have to start with understanding where we are, who we are, what we've got around us in terms of our personal assets, so our networks, our contacts, our friends, our opportunities, our colleagues, uh, money, uh, and build from that by taking small steps, and then review where that gets us on the journey and do the same thing again. So that means we have to continually reflect, continually learn, so that we can develop and change, so that we don't stay as we are, uh, we move forwards. So finally, I just wanted to leave you with the words of Henry Ford. He said, if you believe you can, you are right. If you believe you can't, you are right. The key message is that your future depends on your own level of self-belief. So if you believe, you need to believe that you can do this and you need to develop the strength and the emotions to take this forwards. So I hope this has been useful. I hope it's been helpful in helping you to understand not just the difference between vision and mission in a sort of uh, corporate sense, but also the importance of you developing your own vision and mission as you start out on your entrepreneurial journey. I wish you every success with that journey and thank you for your attention.